Hi, welcome to the Uplift with Vision. I'm Reverend Patty Paris, and we are here to remember who we are, right? We come together for the uplift to remember the core concept one, that we are one, that there is only one. It is God. So let's start off by praying in. Ah, I give great thanks for this day. I know truth. I know peace. I know love. I know and accept that there is one life. It is God. It is expressing perfectly through each and every one of its creations. And we are that. And all life is that. We know that there is no separation. There is only spirit incarnating and as everything in the world of conditions. We know that we are some part, some undifferentiated part of the whole life of God's. And we are the place where spirit shows up in the physical world. So I give great thanks for this time spent together so that we can remember together. We can remember who we are and whose we are and the work that is in front of us to do and the life that is in front of us to live and the love that is in front of us to share. Giving great thanks for this time spent together, I let it be. And so it is. So good afternoon, so glad you joined me today on this wonderful Thursday where we're thinking out loud. This is what I'm calling today, thinking out loud Thursday because there is stuff going on, is there not? There is stuff going on. You know, we are sheltering in place and we continue to, although I know there is movement, slow, steady movement toward opening up. We're still sheltering in place. We're still taking care of ourselves, right? We're unemployed or we're underemployed, or we're needing financial assistance, we're, we're needing some kinds of support maybe from the government or family or whatever to get through this time together. There's also protests going on. There are peace marches and there are demonstrations in the streets. You know, this is, this is the United States version of the trifecta, right? <laughs> and, and you know, the murder hornets haven't even gotten here yet. But we're waiting for them. I understand that they're on their way. Um, and I'm not making light of any of this, please. But, but what I know as, uh, for myself and what I know for you and what I know uh, for us as a nation is that we have been there, prayed that. Right? We have been there, prayed that. We went through the flu pandemic of 1918. Right? We went through and survived the Great Depression, the 1930s. We marched and we demonstrated and we protested the civil rights movement of the 1960s. And so now we're facing all of those elements, all of those events, all at once. <laughs> the flu pandemic. Ernest Holmes had a sanitarium up in Long Beach, I think. Uh, don't quote me, Long Beach or, or Venice, I, I'm not really, I don't really remember. But anyway, I, he had that sanitarium where he was treating young men who had come back from World War I, what they called at the time shell-shocked, right, which, which we know is post-traumatic stress syndrome or stress disorder. And so he was treating them, he was treating them with prayer. He had a fully staffed uh, um, employees, doctors and nurses and you know the whole, the whole contingent, but he himself would treat the young men with prayer. So we, we know uh, he did this right there in the midst of that flu, that Spanish flu pandemic. And what he said was that he did not experience any flu conditions during that time. Uh, in the midst of all of it going on, he said with prayer, you know, that no one in his sanitarium had a problem with it, no one in his hospital. We also know Ernest Holmes' ministry flourished during the Depression. He was supporting people in prayer, people who felt lost, who felt hopeless, who had lost everything. And, and what we know is that was the greatest uh, forward movement in his in his ministry. He attracted thousands and thousands of people with this with this philosophy of ours, this faith philosophy way of life to turn their lives around and to rebuild, to have the strength, to have the the uh, faith, to have the positive attitude to rebuild. Now, Ernest Holmes passed away uh, before the '60s. Uh, uh, he 
passed in 1960, actually. So, so he wasn't here to see the civil rights demonstrations and marches, but he spoke to spiritual equality in his own way. You know, back when the Science Mind magazine, I don't even remember what year it was, but it was in the 50s sometime when the Science Mind magazine was going to uh, segregate right, the, the churches at the time, the religious science churches into white and non-white in their directory, and, and Ernest Holmes would have none of it. He had none of it. He, he spoke very eloquently and strongly about, you know, there is only one, you know, activity going on in that spirit. And it shows up as all of us, and that was it, and he wasn't having anything to do with it, and so the Science of Mind magazine went back to just listing churches alphabetically. Um, you know, the quote on our wall in the, in the front of this building speaks to that address that he gave, that whoever you are, you are a child of spirit, you are one of spirit, and be proud, you know, that you are an outpicturing of spirit, that's it, it has nothing to do with, it, with the color of our skin at all, you know. And so here we are, so interesting, facing all three of these issues at once. Right? We're facing the pandemic of the teens. We're facing the depression of the 30s. We're facing the, the civil rights marches and demonstrations of the 60s. And you know, and you have to think to yourself, what the heck is going on, right? But here's what I know. We can handle it. We can handle it all together. Like I said, Ben there prayed that, right? Ben there prayed that. And, and here's what I know about us, the first question we ask of ourselves, the first question we ask is always the wrong one. And I love it, I, I think it's funny. But the first question we always ask of ourselves is, what should we do, right? What should we do? It is always the first question we ask, what should we do? But you know what we know is taking uninspired action, taking uninspired action is not going to help. I remember the story about St. Teresa of Avila. You know, she had said something like, um, you know, more damage is done by people rushing around trying to do the right thing, right? Without going to prayer first. We rush around trying to do the right thing without being prayed up. And so for me, that question, what do we do? What do we do? We go to prayer. We go to prayer first. That is the first thing we do, if you want to call it that. We pray. We pray first because that is how we get to inspired action. That's, what we, that's when we get to inspired action. You know, there's a story about St. Teresa of Avila when uh, she was given a, a, a convent uh, and then it, it grew very successfully, and the Pope had offered a, a her to open one in a neighboring town. And they had a building for her in that neighboring town, so she took a group of nuns with her, and they walked for days. I don't really remember the story, but it was days and days. And they finally got to the neighboring town. They got to the building they were supposed to be moving into, and it had burned to the ground. And uh, St. Teresa just sat down on a rock in front of the place. And she went to prayer. Meanwhile, all of the nuns that she brought with her are kind of like, you know, running around losing their minds and like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Just exactly what we do, right? We, ah, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And she just sat there. I don't remember how long it was according to the story. I don't remember how long she sat there in prayer. But, she, I, but I'm thinking it was like several days. She just sat in prayer. And, and so, uh, so the nuns around her just sort of kind of gave up, you know, <laughs> asking her, what are we doing? What are we doing? And at one point, a gentleman who was walking down the road inquired as to why they were there. And, and they explained they were to move into this building that was now reduced to rubble and ash. And the gentleman said, oh, I have a building. It's much nicer than this one that burnt down anyway. And I offer it to you to use for your convent. And so... You know, the thing that was a big issue turned into be a non-issue, but why? Because St. Because Teresa went to prayer first, and she allowed herself the time and the space to see what spirit had in mind, you know? And I like that story. Don't even know if it's true or not. I read it in one of, I think, uh, one of the books about St. Teresa. <sighs> Factual, I don't know. However, the story in itself shows, it proves a point, right? Proves a point to us. Where do we go when we don't know what to do and we don't know where to go? We go to prayer. We go to prayer. Faced with the unexpected, 
we pray first. And I want to read this, this quote to you from the Science Mind magazine because it's one of my favorite quotes, and it really speaks to times like this. It speaks to what we should do. Uh, Ernest Holmes said, stay with the one and never deviate from it. Never leave it for a moment. Nothing else can equal this attitude. To desert the truth in the hour of need is to prove we do not know the truth. So when things get bad, when stuff comes up, when we're looking around at, the, at our lives or the country like it is now, it looks like everything is on fire, we go to prayer. We go to prayer. We go to the truth. When things look their worst, this is the supreme moment to demonstrate to ourselves that there are no obstructions to the operation of truth. There are no obstructions to the operation of truth. I love that. When things look their worst is the best time to work, the most satisfying time. The person who can throw himself with complete abandon into that limitless sea of receptivity, having cut loose from all apparent moorings, is the one who will always receive the greatest reward. So this is the time for us to do their work. When things look their worst, Ernest Holmes said, when things look their worst, this is the best time. This is the best time to do our work. Facing the pandemic, what do we do? We pray first. Then we pay attention. Then we do the things that have been working right? We do the things that have been working. We keep washing our hands. We keep using our masks. We keep sheltering at home. We keep doing the things that are working. Same thing with the financial shortages. What do we do when faced with those financial shortages? What do we do when faced with that, that ever depleting bank account? We pray first. We pray first, then we pay attention. We get support. Um, we apply for loans or grants. We, we do the things we need to do that the government is offering, you know. And, and if you're on the other side of this thing, say you're sitting pretty, you've got all the income you need, you're not missing out on anything, you know. You're, this, this sheltering in place isn't depleting you at all. Okay, great. Then donate to those people who are suffering, right? You know, find those people, places, or institutions, or agencies around you that are struggling. We place a high value on our, on our musicians here at Vision. Donate to them. They're the ones who lost all their gigs in this sheltering in place economy that we have now. Buy their products. Support their music. There's always things that we can do after we have prayed. After we have prayed. There is... There is inspired action that we can take. We're facing a new civil rights movement. Don't kid yourself. This isn't going to end anytime soon. This is a new civil rights movement. What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to pray first. We're supposed to pray first and then pay attention. And then get involved. Write letters if you're not going to march. Make phone calls if you're sheltering at home and you don't want to be in with a group. Read. Educate yourself. There are plenty of books on how to be a good white ally. Learn to do that. Nathan Rutstein said this. He said, prejudice is the emotional commitment to ignorance. So we have to educate ourselves. So we need to free ourselves of the ignorance of systemic racism. We each have a part to play. But after prayer, after prayer, when it's revealed to you what your part is, then you can take inspired action for constructive change and not destructive change. You know, we live in a spiritual world. It's all there is is spirit. Right? All there is is energy. We say that all the time. All there is is energy. So we, we call that energy spirit. It is. It's that self-sentient energy that knows of itself in form and where those forms. Everything in the physical world is the outpicturing of spirit. So we live in a spiritual world. It is populated by spirit. That's it. Spirit in form. Everything present in the physical world is God in form. 
all the time, all the time, all right? And what we know is we demonstrate as much or as little of this spirit and all the qualities of spirit, we demonstrate as much or as little of it than that we can believe and embody and demonstrate. We are that. There is no getting away from that, right? We are spirit in form. So it is up to us to do the work of spirit because we are in form. <laughs> why did, why did the 19 teens and the 1930s and the 1960s all come together in this great confluence of conditions at this particular point in time? I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, er Ernest Holmes said people would come to him and say, you know, I have this problem or I have that problem. I'm not working. I have no money. I can't pay. I'm losing my house or this or that. And they would say to Ernest Holmes, what should I do? What should I do? And you know what Ernest Holmes said to him? He said, I don't have a clue. I don't have a clue what you should do. But I know one that does. And then he would take them into session and into prayer. And that's what we are to do. That is what we are to do. We are the people to take this on at this time. All of these things together. Because we know. We know how to take this on. We know how to transcend this. How to change our world. Right? What is Centers for Spiritual Living's tagline? Create a world that works for everyone. We are creating a world that is working for everyone. We are the right people. This is the right time. This great confluence of physical conditions has come all together for us to pray ourselves through and then by inspired action, constructive action, creative action, change it, change the world, create a world that works for everyone. That's what we're here to do. That's why we're here. Let's pray out. I give great thanks for this time spent together. I know that there is only one. There is only one life. It is spirit's life. It is incarnating as all of us. We all have a part to play in this thing called life. We know that we are one. We know that there is only love as much or as little as we can possibly entertain and believe and embody and demonstrate. We know we are abundance. We know we are joy and freedom. We know these things are true because they are qualities of God. Therefore, they are qualities of us. We know the truth for us. We know the truth for each other. And we stand in that and we move forward together because we know there is only one God. There is only one life. There is only one energy, and we are that. Giving great thanks for this time, we simply let it be, and so it is. So glad to spend this time together with you. Remember vision. Huh? Remember from my heart to yours, we are one. We absolutely are. We know and accept that there is no separation. In spirit, there is no separation at all. We are one. Sending my love to you. I will see you tomorrow again at one o'clock for another edition of The Uplift. Come back and share this energy of love and joy together. Bye-bye.